Yeah, yeah. Special guests. So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you James Chesser, all the way from Glasgow. Hey. Hey. Um, Sas, can you uh, play um, James's PowerPoint, please? Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good. That's so a good start already. Um, yes, so yes, um, thanks for coming everyone. Um, yeah, can you hear me okay? One, two, might check, might check. Um, yep. Yeah, thanks for coming. A special thanks to Barry Watson for hooking us up with this. And yeah, it means the world to me to be here today and to Jasper for having us. And um, yeah, everyone read things. And yeah, to my father, it's great to have my father, John Jessup, at the back there, and sister Louise. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I was born, here we are, we're ready to go. Let's get, I've got to get some energy. It reminds me of my, my father used to bring me to a grading on the board with a canvas in, in my neck. You know when you wait in your judo, like right, to go off for like four hours and you're all stiff? And you're like, I'm going to my father. And then they're like, James, yes, and stuff now. And you've got to fight. Suddenly you're going to be able to have all the energy going. But yeah, we're good. <laughs> so I thought, um, I'll start with my birth certificate, like I'm born locally. Um, back in the day, nobody knew where it actually was, so when I'd be in London in the 80s still, it was all kept, the Nick McCoe thing wasn't out yet, so no one knew where that was. So if I said Bletchley well, until 2004 or whenever it was, nobody knew. But now, obviously, since the Nick McCoe and from Bletchley Park, everyone knows Bletchley. So, yeah, is it, is it personal? Have I got a button or are they going to change it for me? Is it next? Next time, uh, please. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like the next generation after Hanif and this morning, I really relate. Um, yeah, when I've been into hip hop for three years, three, four years, but after three, four years, I did see Hanif on the VHS that was taped off of Channel 4, but I didn't know until I saw your photo earlier with that straight away that you were in the second half of bombing with the ball with the V. Yeah. You, you did the imaginary game of cricket and everything with the ball and the, in the, the heat town, that half with, with Birdie and everything that happens on that and family. With your people listen to me, it's after on that and family, you'll go down the shop, we will thump you. Yeah, yeah. And you do sort of like a collabo move with some of the guys, isn't it? So straight away when I saw you with the cap, I didn't realise last night when I met you in it, because this is like what, 38 years ago. <laughs> so I know all that bombing on VHS, but that but that was like new school, like even at the time when I got bombing, that was like, because I was 11, a similar sort of thing, but all 85 seemed forever, all of 86 seemed like, into eight, 88 seemed like I was 14, when I did my first track, so like new school, like this is really, I met Robbo in 87 at Cobham Garden, so, so, but basically, so yeah, I'll take you back to the start, we'll just go through it how, so I was growing up in a and buzzard, and um, yeah, hip hop, I just saw bits of it around. I didn't even know it was called hip hop yet. I was calling it like rap music. In the town, they'd be the guys. These, we used to call this the ghetto blaster. I know now it's called the boombox. But this was the ghetto blaster. And this was my, my mother, um, Sarah's JVC ghetto blaster. And I wanted to be one of the cool kids in Lane Closet. So they, I didn't have, so I sneaked out of the house one time. They didn't know. But I hid it in Nicky Kent's garden at the road. Leaves. <laughs> So when my mum had gone out for a minute, and then when I went into town, I took it out of the bush, and I was in town rocking around with that, like, you know, with my electro free taping, making that go, this is my get a blast, I'm the cool guy doing the break and everything going around. So, um, yeah, so next slide, please. And, uh, but yeah, it was actually a toy at the time, so I didn't know about the freak yet, but the main thing of 85 was like break dancing, we called it. I was a break dance fanatic, my dad had to get me lino in it. And my lino, I was breaking, like, I wasn't even that, it was like up, rock, down, like everything crazy, and it was like now, it was like, all the stuff was happening. And I was like, there's this, I need to get some music for the break dance. So I, did, I went into Wars and they, like, they had break dance by Ali Sands and it had a fake version of the Apache tune, you know on BMXB, the um, break dance electric boogie tune, dun, 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 dun. but it had a fake version of that on it, so I had this one cheap break dance tape, which was called break dance by the way, it more for pounds, I had that and the boom off. So yeah, I, was, I, I didn't know about the free yet, I hadn't even done this toy piece on my toy box, so I had no idea yet, so at this stage I thought, oh, it was like break dancing and rap and didn't really know what hip hop was, kind of thing, so that's the stage I was at, 1985, 8, 11, but yeah, it was, it was total break dance for that. But when, when the game changed for me, I, I wanted to get one of these proper like rap tapes, and they said, oh, what you've got to get is this Electro series. So I did that. I went in the shop, and that Monday after school, Electro 6 had come out, Electro 6, which starts with Roxanne, Sean, Pepper, GTFO. So I went in, 
what got me my money on four pound fifty or whatever to take the original address six. And so when I put that in, it was like the rock sand chip. It was all like, take a look at that girl. It's too cool, rock sand. She's on top, top, top. But what, on the other side of that though, what, what set me ahead? I was the first person in my town who had it. On the other side, it was like Dougie Bresh. And basically, there was the beatboxing thing. So I was 11, I was the first, and I started trying to learn. And this is, the, this is how I learned it. It was like, I was like, um, I was like, right, I was listening to it every night. And I started trying to go like this, like human beatbox. It was like new out, and I was going, <coughs> So the first entry was beat, and, it, and it, the beatbox set. I still didn't know that with a pre, you know, I hadn't done the marker pencil. I had no idea. So I was like, oh, this is it. So there's the dance and the beatboxing. I thought that sort of existed. And then but one day my friend James Park came over and he said, oh, there's also this stuff for free. He had a, he had a black marker and a fluorescent WH Smith highlight, a white paper. And he said, now that you break, I was on the line when my dad had got me and we used the line, we used to pay it and sit, try and spin on our backs or anything. I was trying to do the windmill so wrong, my mate could do it, but I was trying so hard, my leg would come out of its socket at age 11, I was trying so hard with the wrong men picking off. I was dislocating my leg and not telling everyone. So this is how I was trying to do it, you know, I was trying to dance on my ability at the time. But he was like, you need a street name, and he here's this firefly by James Barker. So he did this firefly piece. And I was like, wow, that's so cool, I've got to have a, get a street name on that like pen. And then we were going around making buses, and he was showing me all the spray on the wall, popping and hip hop. And I was like, whoa, so then, I had to get my own pens in school, and then I drew on the top. I only had a freak with love still, but I, I just did the memory hip hop, and it's like really weird. Um, yeah, next slide, please. And then, yeah, next one again. So you can see it says Rap and Ice in there, in the town. Again, the next one again, please. If that's, yeah, so big, yeah, thanks, that's great. So I carried on, man. I, did, was, I got the marker pens, and then all I knew. So to start a bit, like, I, I did this talk with my wife the other night, but when I went for it, she was like, you're not mentioning all the beatboxing and the brave dancing enough, because this talks about about the freak and late and buzzer and Smith Kings, but that's why it's all getting that energy off there. This is all my school books when I was like 11 years old. You get into trouble for drawing them, but still I didn't. I only just got them at my parents' shed recently, back sent up to Glasgow and everything, so yeah, next slide please. A few more school books coming up, and then this is me with my first girlfriend. And I, I, he, he, like my dad was starting. To, my dad's like self-made. He's from like you know like working class, but he, he he made all his own money slowly. But to start with, at this stage, I was only able to be afforded a Woolworths tracksuit. He was still so I, I couldn't get a Rossini tracksuit and a proper Adidas one like the kids. But as his job seemed to get better, we moved to bigger houses, and so I feel like we, I became. Even the middle class, then he got me a proper app track suit, added that one later on, so then I was looking cooler. So this is with my first girlfriend, 1985, full on break. Um, yeah, next slide, please. See so another yeah, school, but next one, please. More the toy box. Yeah, next slide, please. Still a toy. Basically, at this stage now, I heard there was a film, Beat Street, and we didn't have VHS at home. But I, I heard there's this guy called Ramo in it, so there's a Ramo on the side of this box. Now, I was maybe going to be Captain Cole, the rapper on the side, and I did all this hip hop. But I just found this in my parents' garage recently. So this is still age 11, 1985. Um, yeah, next slide, please. And then this is when the game changed. When this, this is Thames and Hudson, Marvel Cooper, and Chandler Cowpant, Sub Alpha, which came out in 1984. But um, I didn't get to see it till 1986, so it took me two years to find out about it. But when we got this book in Lake Closet, we thought we were the only people in England who had the book. It was a couple of friends. 
So we, we used to copy the pieces out of this and pretend that they were our own and not take anyone would find them out. You know, we'd get all the glory. So that was at that stage. But so then, yeah, you'll see some of my copies coming up. And yeah, next slide, please. So yeah, this is the Star Wars piece, which was painted on Super Bowl Sunday night in April 1967. When the Super Bowl was on in New York City, he went down into like a tunnel under Manhattan and painted this Star Wars piece, which went on to be used for the name of the Henry Chow, that's 1983, um, no, 1982 is Star Wars, 1983 is Wild Style. So basically, yeah, I started studying these and I made a copy from this. Yeah, next please. And yeah, this, is, I was, this was around the time I got some out on my 12th birthday, so I'm now 12 years old, and this is my copy of Style. And I thought, no, I don't know if I use the tag Blade, the famous Blade, because I, no one knows I'm the only, one of the only people with the book, my two other mates, so we can copy these. And we're going to be famous in that dude, and no one else will know. So this is how naive it was at this time. Um, yes, yeah, so this is still just into 1986 now, but so it was a really slow progress, my graffiti career. Like, I was really like, shy with it as well. I saw how good some of the other people were starting to be, and then, but I, so I was really scared. And the other older guys would make fun of my work, and it's wild, wobbly, it's toys, you know, every insult. But I was like, I want to do it even though I can't do it properly. I mean, I absolutely love this, this is what I want to do. Um, yeah, next one, please. So this is Autumn Term 86, so they were like, do a good cover of your folder, so it'll be Autumn Term 86. Next one. And then, yeah, then this was a crew, we formed our own crew, MWW, Mount Wildstar Writers, because we were like this crazy inside arts in New York and CIA, so we won our own thing for Lady and Buzzard, so we was like MWW, Mount Wildstar Writers, and then, um, so yeah, I used to sketch them in a pencil and use the barrel marker. Basically, I'd do like one or two of these a day every day. So all of 86, then the same 87, 88, 89, and 84, and then they started to get better, you'll see gradually. Right, next one. And um, yeah, this is the first piece I saw that, and Stephen Ford knows him, if he's out there, if anyone knows him, but he was an absolute genius in Lake Buzzard 3. He did this piece in summer 1986 in Lake Buzzard. It's the first track side I saw. And it said Roxar, R-O-X-A-R-D. And this was the first piece of three months that I saw, was it in somewhere? And we were like, oh, he's not as good as doing this weird style. But actually, and he did see us and we got, you are the guys that keep, oh, not another one of those pieces out of that book of yours making fun of us. But he, he was amazing, but we weren't ready for it. So at first we were like dissing it, like, no, oh, he thinks, but, but then we had to accept. And um, it was also, this piece was done in 100% bump back spray paint which we didn't know about yet. We were still trying to use car paint, but he's used the bump back German. It's like powder, liquid chalk, it sprays on it, it just sits on the surface and it's really rich pigment. But it was about seven, eight pounds a can, even in 86, 87. We didn't know it was bump back yet, so. But yeah, that was a photo I took later on. And then, um, yeah, next image, please. I, I was obsessed to get closer to this piece, so I'd have to zoom. And then, next one, please. See, I climbed down one night in the dark to try and get a photo with my mum's old camera. You know, I couldn't buy it up properly, it was panicking, but that was just taking a closer look at it so I studied it. And um, yeah, so, so that was the rock star, Stephen Falk. Uh, but but they, still to this day, the structure of it, everything, the colour of it, I've not really seen, you know, it's just a uh, genius piece of work. And next one. See, I was practicing every day, here I go again. It looks like the character in um, Bombing when Brim says, his laces are dripping in the subway, or Branson and Brim like, this is a look at his laces, his laces are dripping, because the laces are dripping down. But, um, see, yeah, my characters have not been very poor. My lettering is getting better. Next, please. And on the back is, I was obsessed with bombing, getting my tag up around the town, and then my tag at the time was tech, so I was trying to put the double loop in, and then the giant marker, the first white pens we could find is WH Smith you know, giant marker. So we had practice on paper and try and see if I could do my tag in like under four seconds because like, I can't be caught because my parents were against it. They, my mum would search me before I went out. I wasn't allowed to keep any spray paint at home, any paint that my dad found it would be comp. So they were like not supporting it at all with the free key. I had to make out, I just was going out to look at it, but I couldn't be, I wasn't allowed to do it basically. So yeah, all that was happening. Next, please. And then. Um, yeah, in, in London there was these like Hall of Fames where you could paint. 
And on there, it started in New York, actually, in Harlem, on the State Street Hall of Fame in 1982. I don't know if you know the scheme, there's like Strictly King from Bentham Hall. Like, I don't know if anyone's been out to New York and seen it, but they still do events there now. And, um, but yeah, we wanted our own Hall of Fame, and they buzzed in there was this derelict like, warehouse near like, like, the station. And this, this piece is by like the sketch, and um, he was like two years older than me, he was like the master writer. At, at this stage, like, um, it's done with hammer, like black, and it, it was too expensive, he had to steal the can. I, mean, I, I was really worried, but he managed to like, steal it and everyone across town. And the, I would just help colour in, but he, he was like the master writer, and I would just sort of help colour in a bit. But I sort of took, would take the glory of it, but, but really I realised in the end that was a that sketch of the piece. So yeah, put that in, he was sort of, like, he taught me a lot. Um, next, please. And just, just uh, at this time, Hip Hop Connection, this is 1989, but this Hip Hop Connection came out British in 89, like Risk and Slick from LA. Um, I, I met Slick in London actually in 2001. We, did, we actually did an illegal painting in East London together on the way and that team's work for Ray Das, but so I never knew like 20 years later, or me, or 30 years later. But, but just so you're aware, the standard art, I knew this was the standard art. I still don't think even one of my best pieces. Which is as good as that, but by these two together, risky and slip for the aerosolics. But they won the crew, being a brilliant in 89. And uh, this is someone else's hip hop connection. They lent me, I didn't return it. And then they took, it took a while to find someone to borrow it off. So but I just want to throw that in that I was aware of what was going on a bit through hip hop connection. I used to buy every hip hop connection just for the graffiti to start here. And um, yeah, so they're mining for the DEC now, and the board's a bit like, I mean, Nearly doing out the back. We've started to paint some boards out the back, you see on the break, and then doing like a collab, a bit like this kind of thing in our own way today. So, yeah, next one, please. Um, this is a painting again by Sketch um, for his girlfriend, Sam. But this was the warehouse in Lake Buzzard, but it was very empty in here, just to give you a sort of feeling of atmosphere. So, yeah, I was documenting it. And yeah, next one, please. And I've just tried to like bring the colour out a bit more there. And then, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the next slide is, but basically, if, let's, oh, oh yeah, this, this is after that, that's the same spot exactly. If you look really carefully, you can see where it says sound above it. As the years went on, there was a piece in the yellow that said, like, diary, and then E's underneath. And then over the top was a mash piece, but then I did this tech piece when I was 16 on my lunch break, because I wasn't allowed out at night, so on my lunch break, the only way I could do a piece in the Hall of Fame, I had one out, so I had to get a letter to get out, and I was like, 16 one hour, this is like early 1990 yet. So I had one hour, I had like sort of 10 minutes to get to this spot, and then about 20 minutes to do the piece, and then we'll have to get back to school without having to down that. And then when I was when I was painting even, like a young kid came and put me up, and then I went and hit. When I came back, he was taking my spray can, but I managed to get them back, and then I was like, I'm, I'm doing this piece. And then, um, yeah, and then Sketch, my, the, the guy, the, the critic of this piece, he was like, it looks good to start, but someone's done red scribble all over it, just taking the red, you know, this in it, because I've done that red sort of wavy line to try and make it look popping. But he just said that you've done red scribble all over your piece. So it'd always be like these, these strict critiques that then like break your heart, you know what I mean? The, the master guy. Cause, because, like, sort of now, some of the younger people don't understand about, like, sort of street cred or being asked to be in a crew to be down, they don't get, they're like, oh, but I could buy that anymore, like, you know, there's some of that. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like your street cred was everything, what you live for, the respect, isn't it? So, see, so yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, that's another piece. We, we'd sneak up to London on the one day travel car from Leighton Buzzard. Again, like my dad didn't know anything. We had the one day travel car, £3.30. We'd go to Covent Garden, go around London, we'd come back to Leighton Buzzard and do like a piece inspired by what we'd see in London. So this was one in Leighton Buzzard down the back of the Narrow Game for Hour, the little line on that head piece. We'd, we'd sketch again, maybe do it. I helped car it in. There was people working in the factory to see the lights on. And then I was like, terr terrified the police would come and get us. Because one time the police did come and they got us and we couldn't get away. And then my dad was, went crazy. I didn't get my tracksuit, my Rossini tracksuit. And he was going to go and get it. He just said, you, you know, you've, been, you've got a caution for graffiti. You're not having, so we're not going to get a tracksuit today. So I still didn't get my tracksuit. <laughs> but um, yeah, next one is... So 87, yeah, Mark managed to steal at the top of the garden ground. I got an art centre this um, can of pink bun. Actually, he did this tall piece for Leighton Buzzard. And I was like, this is nuts. How would really he go in the shop? They were watching everywhere. It was like, can of work box, cold garden. He managed to steal this can of pink. Then we went back to Leighton Buzzard. And, 
And then there's a right piece by Steve next to it, all scribbled on. Ease the pain as well, but people with this like ease this kind of thing, so it's all like. Um, yeah, next one, please. This is by Set Free London, where I went to the, the Covent Garden, there was these guys, like, um, when we went on a break at Covent Garden, it evolved into like, when it got to like 86, 87, the three yards started hanging out at the same spot on the benches there, on these wooden like, barriers, and sit and sign each other's books. And then, so yeah, we, so we take our school books and then get them to sign. So one time I met Robert, I got Robert's autograph, and I got set free to put up most, and I was amazed at how fast they'd do them. And then I try and then I take this back to my muscle and study it for a week, trying to learn how to do something that fast. So yeah, that's very important to me. All right, next one. See, this is one of my own drawings. I started getting better practicing more. Um, a A4, sort of early 1987. Next slide, please. And again, yeah, I got in, by the time I was 13, I was getting up to this standard now. And then, yeah, people were asking to borrow my sketchbook this time to copy it. And then someone borrowed it and got rain on it one day. And, but yeah, I was starting to get some respect at this time. I had, I had um, people said I got photographic memory as well, so I could look at the pieces and, and then remember them because we didn't have cameras. So yeah, this is when I was starting to get some props sort of in my buzz at this time. Some, 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 and then, yeah, that book made me feel in my confidence and everything. And um, yeah, next one, please. And yeah, at this time, so that we got it, this is my first art press. This is Sunday Night 87. With, um, you can see the names on there. It's for me, me, I'm on the, um, the far right here. Basically, I was banned from seeing the guy on the far, the far left. I was banned from seeing him. And, um, but when the paper came out, my mum and dad saw me in the paper, and they were like, you with Mark, you know, and then I got in loads of trouble grounded. <laughs> Probably like they threw the book at me, you know, you're in the paper. And then um, it was pouring with rain and the boat was taken to my like, fringe block down. And then, um, yeah, those guys were all sort of better than me, but in the end they kind of faded out. And when they calmed down, I sort of carried on. It's almost like the relay with the baton, but I just carried on running. Like, like, I'm still running now, even but, um, Yeah, so that was 87. That's one of my favourite years in graffiti. It was really exciting. My bad meaning good was shown on BBC. Tim Westwood documentary. It had all like, the London Creek section with Public Enemy and it rebel about the course, rocking with all these trains like Pure and Coma, and that just like, blew my mind away. So, yeah, it was one of the most exciting years, um, like until probably 1993 was the next year that was as exciting as 1987. But, yeah, that's all to come. And, um, yeah, I'm doing 345. So, yeah, next slide, please. And um, yeah, I wanted to like copy, like in, in America they were copying from say like Pluto and Walt Disney. So I thought I'll try and copy from something locally, like I've got one of my Albinos. So I made this Dodge City, it's like a Tag City piece. Next slide, please. And then, yeah, so this was ADA Tech, and then I did it like Tag City. And then this is the outline for my first track side, but I've left the photo out and um, got by mistake, but so it's not a photo of the piece, but. Um, but yeah, you get the idea of it, so I thought, yeah, have a go at that. Because characters I was weaker at, like lettering, I was more confident, and that's why I got into graffiti anyway, because it was the lettering that upset me, like not, not like cartoon characters, but, but I did I did want to be able to do it as well. Obviously, like Mo 2 or whatever, I think is one of the most amazing paintings ever on the characters and the way that's just lettering, so yeah, don't get me wrong, but and then it's like confidence with the characters if you do them wrong, they look so wonky and people make fun of them in it if you get like a cockeyed monster on the wall, whatever. <laughs> If it's the letter, you can get away with it a bit more. So, yeah, so that was 1988, age 14, around Easter time. Next one, please. And then, yeah, this is one of the pieces in Name Bottom Hall of Fame. I was getting better. 1989, age 15, I got one can of gold and some matte black um, like car pan paint on a Sunday. So, my parents would think I'd be out skateboarding, which I was, but in between, I'd also sort of find a couple of ads. It's like doing one of these. And then, um, yeah, so that, that was how it's going. And then a lot of the other pieces behind, like the sketch tank underneath me, but the other stuff of different pieces that got, got gone over sort of gave it its own atmosphere. Next one, please. And then, yeah, it was important to change the style. The style was like fashion, so it's not just like now some of the artists do one design. If you look each time, it's got a different outline. So the fashion was like, you'd be laughed off every, for every three months of the letter was changing so I do the tech in like a whole different way to the one before. So this is right at the start of 1990, I was 15 still. And um, yeah, so that was my first piece of 1990. But 
yeah, I was pleased with that one. So yeah, a little bit of pink, which was, it was really hard to get. Like at the time, it was spray cans. Like pink was really hard to get. So and um, yeah, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, next one, please. I was skateboarding a lot at the time at Melbourne Keys. This is when I was sixteen. Now, so it was nineteen ninety. And then, yeah, I was the only sort of skater who was tagging as well. And then some of the other skaters thought like, you shouldn't even be doing the tagging and that they didn't like as well. But then after a couple of years, they got into it and started painting. And, you know, but yeah, so, but yeah, um, yeah, next one, please. It's another skate photo. Yeah, it was the first person to Wally decided in like 99 at the bus station. They took this wall out and then, so I was smashing the skate and then doing the, the painting at the same time. Next, please. Um, yeah, I got into VTEC National Diploma when I was. Um, 16, then I was like, they were like, you're so into art, you, should, you don't need to do A levels, you might as well just go for this B test season, you'll probably be able to get straight into your fine art like degree, polytechnic. And um, yeah, so I did the course and I got into poetry polytechnic in 1992. And um, yeah, next one, please. I was into like Ballad and Futurist because it reminded me of the letter of the So I was starting to study this sort of stuff and bring it into my work as well, looking at the rhythm and movement and like. Diagonals. And um, yes, yeah, so this was some of the stuff I was studying, and, and then I just sort of talk about it in my interview when I went for my interview at Coventry Polytechnic. And um, at, over the summer, it became a university. So when I got there, I got into university, but by blue, because I meant to go to the Polytechnic when I got there. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, a, it was a uni, so my mum was more very proud of it. My son's going to university. <laughs> this is in 1992. Um, yeah, next image, please. Yeah, again, like, oh, this was 1991, and then, um, so I've done the first year of BTEC, and then these are two tech outlines, and I put doing graphs and make things tough, because my parents would get so cross. But I did these outlines, and when my mum and dad went on holiday for two weeks in, like, June 1991, and the, my sister, you had the car crash on the Monday, you bumped the escort, so. <laughs> But, so I wasn't allowed to do the briefing still, they were strict, so went, as soon as they were out, I was like, this is an opportunity, so I did, I went out two Sundays and painted, and then I did my first political piece as well, which you'll see in a minute, um, yeah, but I did my first political piece for free as well around this time, so was, I needed to do a painting, and I couldn't do it, because my parents, I couldn't say I was going out in the middle of the night, from late past to Mount Keynes, so I thought I'd do a painting. Um, yeah, next slide please. So yeah, there's more sketches. Next slide, please. And um, yeah, that was the one I did some, I got up really early, I hated getting up early, but I went and did it and I was so tired of it. It came out really awful, but I just thought I'd put it in anyway. Fifth, fifth of the seventh, what was that? June's the seventh, isn't it? May's the fifth, what was it? No, July, I don't know. Fifth of the seventh, 1991. Yeah, next one, please. And then that was the other outline, the other Sunday. And then I like them before I put the black on, so um, yeah, I, I used to take photos of them before I put the black outline, which will we'll probably hopefully be in the next slide. Okay, like that. There you go. So, yeah, the sun was coming up, it's like six o'clock Sunday morning. This is like sort of two and a half miles. I skated from like Lane Bus to Lindsay, which is about two miles, and then I skated back across town. Then I'd do some tags in the middle of the town centre Sunday morning because no one was up yet. And then, and then people were like, how has he got his tags up in the town centre? And then, yeah, next slide, please. Um, yeah, at, at the time, when I was 16 to 18, um, my girlfriend was like, she made three, she made him, and um, so I was seeing her for three years, and then, um, cause I, I met her at Barnwood College of Eden, and then, um, yeah, I had some black friends who were skateboarding as well, and then one time, in, in Milton Keynes, there was this little scene bit of three, the paint as you came into the station, up on the south side bridge, and it was saying, we were talking about, you know, not the Dyer Bridge, but the Southside Bridge. There's this big bit of scene three d So I made this end racist in peace, and then I went up. And um, yeah, next slide, please. And this was coming, this is like, I've got some a different photos of it, but this was like filming a VHS camera for my skateboard video. And um, yeah, next one, please, about. And it's the whole, so basically the train stopped there, and then it, I made the thing where it said, I put end racism over it, it was like this racist group. So I took it out with this end racism. I, I made it to say that it equaled end racism. And this was like really scary to do. The trains were running, but I got there at 11 in the evening, the trains were still running. Then I climbed down, and then it was really panicking. The trains were all lighting me up. But I, had to, I managed to get it done. Yeah, next slide, please. And then I could only get this photo of it with the 
race isn't here because you can see the other thing coming through while it's taken out. It basically, um, I couldn't stand on the train track, so I didn't want to get run over, so I've only got a, a, a funny angle, do you see what I mean? So I, I didn't want to get like, run over by the train, so um, yeah. And at this time I was using silver spray instead of aluminium, so I didn't know that aluminium is what pops up with chrome. I haven't found that out yet, so. So did that, um, get next please. That was another, that was from Barry's blog, yeah, the, the other, I don't know where that got, but that was another shot of it there. And then, yeah, one more piece. So yeah, that, it, it got cleaned off after two months, I'd written on the other image, but it was up for about two and a half months, and then they came the whole wall wire. Um, yeah, next one please. And then yeah, I went to see my friend Mark, I was scared, he didn't even know, I never said what had happened, or and my girlfriend, I never told like Shadow either what, what had happened, that I'd seen, I, I, I just was just ashamed of the, the graffiti that I'd had to get rid of, and then, but yeah, that's my friend Mark, as a scared of being at Coombs. Next slide please. But I'd literally just filmed the video, and then Mark was in the video, you see, when I got there as a still, so but I never said anything about it. Um, yeah, this is a tech piece of late muzzle. The structure's now been destroyed. So that's the thing that like, the, the government may make a big thing about it. In the end, the building gets knocked down the old city. It doesn't matter, the damage, because the building's like knocked down in the end. It's, it's not, you know what I mean? So, yeah, next one, please. Um, yeah, this is what, so yeah, Mark was just looking out for us when I did this one. This is just before my driving test, my 17, like the week before, and I had a few cans in the dark, and then, yeah, we're skating all day. And then I did that one, yeah, text number one, and then missed the tech. And at this time, no one was painting me on Keynes, so everyone stopped. So from 1990, when there's the road up piece up there, everyone had been caught and quit, and, and they were saying it's not the fashionable thing to do or whatever. So from 1991, all of 92, 93, up to 94, like I, had, I called it the drought, but for some reason it really died. And I was like, I can't stop doing it, it's a special thing I've got to keep doing. It's a bit like a ritual or whatever, and it's, you were saying, like, um, uh, so, um, yeah, so I carried it on. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of gist of it, really. But, um, yeah, next slide, please. More text, next slide. See, just the prolificness of it carrying on. Next one, please. I did this, you can see it in the distance, the size of a postage stamp out of the window. The doors were closed, but my mum and dad never knew. But I did this garage door at Oxenden and Court. And then cheaply, I could see it out my bedroom window just before we were moving. House, I knew. It was on this old Derek Gallo door. So yeah, that's a little cheeky one. Next one, please. This is Chris Inter's car, Melbourne Kings in 1991. He commissioned me to do a tech piece on his car. The first Man City support I was ever met by a now. So I was like, oh, support Man City. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, ne next slide, please. This is the outline for the other side. Um, yeah, Christmas, like, end of 91 for Chris, it says in there. Next. And that's the car in blue. Yeah, next one, please. And then I'm sat in the car at Memphis Peace Bar Station. And there's a Blue Man City shirt, look, that's on my foot that you put in the car. But I didn't think nothing of it, innit? I was like, why is it Man City? It doesn't even exist in it at the time. It was like, I was like, that's not a football club. But it, honestly, that was how I felt. I was like, fair play, they support Man City and that. I couldn't get my head around it at the time. So, support, support, quick, 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 Chris is his car again, keep him going, yeah, just keep him rolling. Next slide, please. Basically, this is, a, uh, this is all my work that I got ready for my interview. So <laughs> to hope to get, uh, this is to hope to get selected for an interview at Coventry Polytechnic, when I was, which I did with all this work. I did get an interview, and then my father took me, drove me from like, bus to Coventry, and I got in today, yeah. So that was like, so when I was 18, I started. But yeah, that's all my life drawings and different things, all the projects they sent me. I didn't always enjoy doing it in the way they wanted us to do it, but I just did it all anyway for me. And then I was doing free on the way home and stuff, and then um, tagging on the buses. And then, in fact, the buses, when I learned to drive, then the buses go off because from that point, so I used to tag two buses to get there and, and two buses home. So I had every bus in there, all the tags. It's like four days a week, you know, four buses, 12 buses a week for the year. Then every bus has got my tags all over it. But, See, so yeah, I was doing, doing all that, never got caught with it, because it was like scared. But maybe it was better not to get caught. Because they say, like, doing graffiti, yeah, it's doing something in secret, and then it's later revealed, it's like discovered after, so it makes you, like, get away with it. That's not magic when you try and do it. And then they discover it after, like, who the hell did that? Like, what's going on? Let's get rid of this mess and everything. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, next slide, please. 
And yes, I've experimented with some photography. This is like a, a 992, it's a photo of my friends in the, 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 the car, car park at MTS bus station. That's the sort of building behind and that place going on saying. And yeah, next one please. And then, oh yeah, Christmas 91, I did this van, I ate bus with this lorry, and then I thought, oh, nothing will come of it. But then it was in the paper, and went, please, the hunt for Mr. Tech. And then my dad had to hide the paper so my mother wouldn't see it. He managed to do it, and he got away with it. So my mum over there, and I thought, oh, but, um, so, yeah, and then it was just, it was in the paper, though, it was a paper that Mr. Tech was paying for the van, because it said Mr. Tech on the side as well. So, yeah, I did that one, and um, yeah. So, I still had a paint the train this time, so. Yeah, this is 1991. Because I didn't paint my first train to a row about nine years later, year 2000. Um, yeah, yeah, next slide, please. This is the Diane Bridge, like Neil calls it. And um, yeah, so what's it? This is the North Side Bridge. First Bridge North. Yeah, this is the First Bridge North of Milton Keynes. And there's some different stuff on there. Next one, please. And then, yeah, that's the Diane. I did um, Blaine, this, who became a drum and bass producer on Moving Shadow and stuff. He blew up a new Blaine, but his talent was Blaine. But when he, he, was, he, was, he made the tune, the music taste in like 1991, it went so big. He, was, he stopped writing and he, he was like, so, but he, he, he gave me all his pain. So I went and did this big Diane piece. I started writing Diane, and I jumped, I jumped up and got my friend Chris Conley to take a photo of something levitating. But yeah, just having some fun with it the next day. But it was foggy when I painted this, so you couldn't see from the road in the fog at the angle. There's all trees in front of it now and stuff. You don't see it in the same way and everyone's <laughs> saying about it. But, um, but yeah, it's all full of the creepy, but yeah. All right, next one, please. That's another one in colour. And um, how is it with my skateboard clothes on that? Next one, please. And um, yeah, this is an album for my 25th illegal piece. I counted them off because I was so scared. I was like, I've painted illegally outdoors 25 times now and every time I've got to be arrested. But this is the 25th time I've went out and did a piece, and uh, this is the design for it, the, the Techno Innovation 92. And um, yeah, next slide please. And then there it is, I'm the, in the middle of the bridge, you can see it from, I did it in the middle of the bridge really big, so you can see it from both ways. But I like, borrowed my mum and dad's like, full escort, drove up with my mum's wooden ladder, I should have gone mad if I lost it, but I had like, a ladder there to stand on one night, did the white emulsion, and then the next night I went back, had the ladder again and the spray the next night when the wire dried. And then it's like pretty minimal because you can see it's tech 25, July 1992. Um, so yeah, that was it. It was up for about four or five years actually. Because no one, like I said, the draft, no one was painting at that time, but it did get taken out in the end. Right, again, yeah, next one, please. And yeah, just before I left, like, I was getting all confident, so I was trying to bat them out. And I was, I was going to start the Coventry Hard Technic in it. So I, was, I wanted to paint the multi story car park at the top of the multi story tower, you could see from the whole town. So I managed to do it quickly before I left, which is the next slide, please. And then there it is, but basically that's a five story multi story, and that's the tower up at the top, so you can see it. It was up for about like, five years or so. But, um, so yeah, I always wanted to do that, and that's what I knew about using the aluminium spray instead of the silver because it popped out more. So I did that tag really quickly. But, um, yeah, and I was starting to go out raving at this point because um, I was attracted to the rave music because it had all the great beats of like the breakups. And so I used to do all the up rocking and sort of be all around the raves and not, and not take any drugs. And other like, people make fun of me like, you don't play, I wouldn't take any either. I was too scared to take my beat because it was like the hype. I liked the music. So I, I used to get, sort of start going out to the raves. And just be in the raves all night, like at um, Club Elevation Shards, Reality, and London Rain Arts and Barking. I was allowed to go, I was 18 by this time, so I was allowed to go and stay out all night. And um, yeah, next slide, please. And then, um, yes, yeah, so I went to this payback at Lubin in, in July 92, it just was going crazy with all the break beat. It was like the aim and break the tunes that was in the hip hop. I didn't realize it at the time, but all the hardcore in the jungle had the aim and break in it. And that was the one I used to go nuts to, but I didn't know it was off of the old seven inch, the Iron Man brother at the time. I thought, why are the ones there's this certain rhythm to them? You know, or funky drummer as well, in it, like that. So that, that, all those ones I was attracted to, but I didn't understand that the certain breaks were, yeah. But, um, and then the, you couldn't take cameras in, so when I got out, I would do like drawings from memory. Next slide, please. And um, yeah, these are kind of like pastel drawings and concrete drawings I did, but energy, I was so excited for that. Tried to do these drawings. Next one, please. And this is when I went to Dreamscape 2 at the Sanctuary in February 1992. I was 17 still, I was worried about getting my dinner, and that's all the green laser light, and there were thousands of raves, because it was like a big craze of raving, it's like everyone was going to the raves. 
is what the whole of Europe needs when. So yeah, that was happening. Um, yeah, next one please. <coughs> yeah, so this is my first oil painting I did when I was 18. I did a A1 oil painting, like colourful. Um, yeah, next please. And then yeah, when I, when I did my first um, presentation at Compton University, the first year I called it a free painting and related artist. And I just said about that, I had about John Michel Basquiat and Keith Murray. And, um, then that's me, a self-portrait, Italian and concrete. And then it says Basquiat Hara and Sharp in the middle. This is 1992, when people weren't into those artists so much. And basically that's me at night with my hood Italian and concrete. So I could go out at any time of night, but first time I keep spray painting in my room, I was 18. So my parents wouldn't let me. So then I sort of started doing it. I was by concrete feed because I was 18, which was me in the Hall of Residence and Concrete Town Centre. But then I could go out and just, anywhere, and I just took the whole tag. I tagged the lady who died, the statue, Plymouth Eve, and I had it, and people like your man, it's kind of, so I just sort of took over the whole city, basically, and no one had painted, again, there was a drought in Coventry, all the writers had got caught in 89 stops, so when I popped up, there was this drought period, I had all the 92, 93, 94, it was just only me painting there, more or less, so, yeah, next one, please. Um, yeah, this is a tech piece I did in 1993 on the um, North Side Bridge on the back. And it's tech T K. It's, it's inspired by Bronx style, kind of like bio, like kind of tax through wild style, and sort of blame the hero. And then it's a car flan blue spray paint. The red is a red kind of tractor paint that I got from Juice in Birmingham when I went up yeah, to Sally O from that. Um, so it's called red tractor paint. But there's all the effort to get all these cans to make the pieces. And um, yeah, it's kind of like black spray paint, but when it was the new handwriting, which when it was thinner, the black went thinner, all this stuff was happening. Um, yeah, next one, please. Oh, uh, yeah, basically in Coventry they had their 80s nights. So in 1994, I put all my people were here on and went to it, but no one knew what it was because they didn't know what break dancing was. Up. They didn't get it. I'm like, yeah, but it's an 80s night, so I'm doing break dancing. I went like that, and no one got it. They didn't know about it, all these people into the interview and stuff. They didn't really get it, they were like, it's an 80s night, why have you come as a break dancer? And I was like, yeah, that's what was happening in the 80s. <laughs> so, yeah, we, and I, I got all my fat laces, we used to get the curtains to make the white laces, so I used to love it. I'd wear them like a suit or to keep my like, people. I always kept like fat laces, and we would call the Fat Lace Hooligans crew at that age, and then, yeah, because so I was a success. So I always had my fat laces for my graduation and everything going. But yeah, that's the 71 North of the Road, Coventry, that a lot, a little Coventry thrown. And that's my painting behind the letter K. I was doing like, you know, like really on canvas and everything. Yeah, next one, please. This is um, train strike night. There was train strikes today, and there was train strikes about years ago. This is the East April train strike, Leighton Buzzard. This is near the site of Ryder Go Bridge, the great train robbery. Um, yeah, someone else in this room has worked on this wall. It's now been knocked down again, so the, the wall was destroyed. But um, yeah, it was 19 when I did this one, and people really liked the style of it. You can see it in the train. Yeah, got a lot, a lot of love, lot of love this one. When I stopped painting and leaving in 96, 97, 98, because that's the three years of my life, I haven't done any of the graffiti, because I relapsed in 99, I stopped for three years, but since 99, I relapsed, I have done it every year. But yeah, so next slide, please. Um, See, so yeah, I just put about in 86 that I'm the longest active writer still going. In 2006, I was like, there'll never be much future on 2006, so I better write this. But um, no, I'm back here for the first time since 1993. Um, yeah, next, next slide, please. That was the drawing for it. I put no, no tricks in 86, no tricks in 2006. Um, and I put like Miss Tina Skay's T design and all the crews, but that's some of the writers and they must do a lot of the work. And then the remake's the next one. Next slide, please. And yeah, so that I redid it in 2006 for Christmas. But I still had to sneak out with my parents. I was at my parents for Christmas, but my friends came and got me in the car. And we said we were going to the pub, but they drove me to the hall and I did that. And then, yeah, I'd been at Fabric actually 10 years of logical progression. And I've seen like Goldie playing and then Fabio took them. And then by that time, I was trying all the raves. So I was like on a massive come down for doing this one. So I, I was, you know, I was doing like the proper rave and stuff like this, like getting on it. Because yeah, drum and bass is a massive. Basically, for, for 33 years, I've only listened to hardcore drum balls and drum and bass every day. As it rolled through, after hip hop, I went and down the groove. And um, yeah, ne next, next one, please. This is the jungle piece. So, yeah, 94, the biggest tune went, Are oh, you really ready for some blood on jungle techno? Check one, check two. So, I did this like jungle piece. On, but I thought no one would ever see, nobody did for free anymore, I remember keen. So, I went to the back of the wall 
and did this jungle piece that no one ever see on the back of the wall. Uh, I think this is, this is my photo, isn't it? And your barrier's gone. But yeah, Barry had seen people found it years later and they got really into it. Next slide, please. That's the techno. I made the text. It said jungle techno. This is Barry's photo. This is how I met Barry. So I was doing a remake in 2019, you know, Kings and the jungle techno. It became like an enemy piece, a bit of a, yeah, an iconic piece. So, and um, yeah, that's how I met Barry. So, next slide, please. And there it is, jungle techno. Check one, check two. I agree with that. Yeah, we are. Time to get some jam in the mood. Cut to that, was it? It's the way. Yeah, so this was all raging, just drinking water in 94. I didn't do any drugs in the 90s. And then just all my legal energy. And yeah, next one, please. Pretty much the end of the MP. That's the remake in 2019, the day I met Barry Rocks. And he came down the video, and then, yeah, me or yeah, hooked it up, and they got to the cat, did the jungle tech, the remake. And then I think that's all the MP stuff. Next one, please. And then there's just some things I did as well now, just to finish up. Where did all this take me? Because I, 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 there's all of my Coventry chats with the Brit I haven't shown. There's our twos and sweet I haven't shown. There's my London chats I haven't shown anything from London or there's basically 38 years worth. But but yeah, this is my degree show, age 21, one of my key pieces. Next slide, please. And next me in the paper of Coventry. And then the drum and bass guys, I was really disappointed when I in the record shop, they were like, yeah, we saw you in the paper, so they were scribble, they were like pissing it, they didn't like my abstract paper deep, the guys in the record shop, but anyway, I carried on the front. So, yeah, next one, please. We're almost there. So, yeah, I've got a studio in Coventry with my Jeff Job Seekers Lounge, and, but I painted full time, so, yeah, I did drop JSA, I was like, and my gyro check hung the pan every two weeks. And um, yeah, this, around, around this time, I started going to the evangelical church in Coventry at my own. That's why I stopped drinking and doing Greek for three years. So I was, that was kind of like my AA in a way. I, 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 I had to stop all the addiction of all the, the Greek and drinking. And then, yeah, um, that's what sort of, sort of lit up, I guess. It's empowered by the spirit that there is a God or whatever. So, but I, so that like, lit up like that in 1996. Your painting's powered by God. But, um, so yeah, that was coming out like that. Next slide, please. And yeah, I had an interview at Royal College Bar, but I really wanted to go, I didn't get in, but I made this painting in 1997, still at Coventry, and with this painting, like, my dad drove me from Coventry, so I'm, I got accepted to Royal College Bar, at the time I had Peter Doyle you know, because of me, the yeah, I went to Royal College, almost there, yeah, next one please. Then I went to Royal College and did this one, this, this painting impressed um, my boss now, I got a job teaching at Sydney York to London Arts School, where I wanted to find out when I was about 24 years old, which I still do, I've been doing it since 99 every year, it's like a four week project. And we study Rubens and make a contemporary painting from a people Rubens. So this is the painting that got me the job. And I, I sold this painting at the time for about a thousand pounds, which I, I needed the money, I had to sell it. So yeah, it's by Hero and Leandro, the original one. I put the gesture Rubens and the tagging into it. So this is all the places it's taken me. And then I was listening to like drum and bass, like sort of like, yeah, like source direct and stuff, really punchy dark side drum and bass and making all these like dramatic paintings. And I wanted to make drum and bass as well, but I was too scared how to get to the technology, but that all like came later on when I reached to, to, to start making my own drum and bass. But at this point, as well as paintings, I, was, I didn't know how to get in the studio so I would get to the electronic equipment. Um, yeah, next one, please. That's at the Royal College. Um, yeah, next one. Almost done, almost done. Charles Sanchi bought my painting for three thousand pounds in two thousand and four out of a gallery in Hackney. Um, horrific, I did it was it was me at the Dragon Bar, this raw space. I did my show, horrific paintings, and then Banksy was next, and he did his Santa's Gap in two thousand and two. And he said, "Your man, James, like you're you're never going to sell these big paintings." And so I put them. There's a fly you can see. It's like horrific next Santa's Gap at Old Street, the Dragon Bar. But yeah, Charles Sanchi saw it at this other show, and brought it, and it went straight into the entrance of his gallery. This was New York, two thousand and four. Um, next one, please. That's me in Manhattan in 2006 or so. My painting yeah, got taken out for an exhibition in New York. Next one, please. And um, I was painting in Sweden and um, in a kind of hip hop handball style, cool, like sort of Buffalo Girls, kind of like Bill Blast, kind of like. Yeah, next one, please. Hey, that's my deal subway. I did a really quick panel of Rock Bronze Park East on my own. We got two cans of black spray. This was in 2011. I was living in Manhattan for three months, so I had a free flat to live in Manhattan. I gave the guys two, pa two pages, but I went out quickly. Blade told me to go off the train station and walk into the train yard. Pretty gnarly, but um, 
Um, yeah, so that was there. Hor Horror, it says 2,000 American movie, obviously, you're on the parties. And yeah, I was waiting for an hour, there was a guy in front of the train, I was waiting for an hour to go. And then I had these gold shoes on the hot um, so I was like, I'm going to throw the shoes away afterwards. And see, I went and did it, and then I threw the show. I had to get one there because you swipe in and out. But, but yeah, but, so I did the, the quick hand on the twos and threes. <coughs> and yeah, that's one of these. And then that, this, I had a sell-out show at Thomas Cohen, so I bought a forty thousand pound show. So I got twenty thousand pounds just in two thousand and eight with my Def Jam Recordings T-shirt on there here in the hip hop. Um, yeah, next one, please. And um, this is me and Martha Cooper for the twenty fifth anniversary. So I up, they asked us to do a, a fancy painting. This was in two thousand nine, the day that Michael Jackson passed away. And um, this is a black print press gallery. And that's me and Martha twenty fifth anniversary book launch. Next one, please. And I did this huge wall in Miami, and Mark Cooper took this photo of me. I said, Could you get me jumping above the wall? It's by the street from Australia to Howard, and I did the left and went to Dean. And yeah, the next one, please. And uh, I went out to Moscow in 2018. Like, you'll see me in amongst the group, and I'm wearing my logo on the front. I've got the, the huge spot, this is my logo here. And then, but yeah, it's, I'm there with the, the vest on the, on the um, there you go, pants. And then that's all I said is to come more size piece. Yeah, let's go, go through to the end now, please. It's one at a time. That was the show in Moscow. They like paid, it was like a B&R, so they like paid for the guy out of the studio for two weeks in Moscow. That's pretty cool. Next one, please. Yeah, they did the horror light in New York for the show. One up through was in the show. It was a big deal. Mark Cooper and stuff was in it. And then, yeah, next one, please. And next. This is a, a, for Milton Keynes, it hangs in Milton Keynes Library. I think you can see it today, isn't it? It's a commission, £3,000 for the MK Skate Commission. I did all the skaters in Milton Keynes in the 90s, onto the composition of Peter Paul Rubens. And then one more side piece, then we're done. And then that's it in the library for Keynes. Thank you for, yeah, any, any, thanks for listening. I hope that's okay. Right, yeah, so you're all happy.
and not being able to speak about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think true. It came up a few sort of like, I, yeah, uh, over Royal College at one point it came up on some of the students. There was about five students saying I shouldn't even be there because I should just be doing the graffiti. It's like, why can't I paint on canvas as well? I want to do, I like to do both anyway, innit? it? So, experiment. So, but yeah, it was, it was good as well because it kept me around art. Otherwise, I would have had to get a full time job. Because some of the other graffiti people were like, I'm sad, I went to art school, don't count, you can be. But I was, I was self taught in a way for me, like, up to when I was 16, it goes back that long. So, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. There is like, oh, I, I, I went to art school, don't count, or whatever. I know, it's like, no, I did that so I can be around art full time and practice all the drawing. All the VTEC tricks for scaling up life drawing. I used so I could scale the letters into better proportions. You see what I mean? So I used it all for my passion to, to graffiti and then to be around collecting paints and inks and have a studio as a paint. Because bit having that, being an artist, a studio is a great cover for doing for having all your rollers and your paints and having your wig and going out. Also skateboarding, I always get away when I skate. As soon as I, I paint a thing, I always drop over the wall once my skateboard, I'm literally skating off. Then like the police come they just see someone skating on the street and it does look suspicious as much as just skating over in the dark, so <laughs> so I made it work for us, but yeah, cheers for the crash convincing. Alright. Anyone want that? Alright, let's go. Alright, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. 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 Amazing.